All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, good morning, good morning, good morning. All right. So let me just start off by saying that, yeah, there was definitely a new frequency that came through. Made my husband a bit tired, um, though he does do a lot of fishing. And last week was a little bit different for him. And so he got a little bit of time off. But when you put so much fishing together, like, 24 hours of fishing in a 48 hour period. <laughs> it's a lot to come back from. So he definitely, you know, was able to do some fishing and then also rest. And I'm so happy. So he was resting. So was I, I was having dreams. I didn't really have too many high. It was a little bit itchy here and there, but at least the demons eat food, sleep, and I'd be snoozing and I'd he hear myself start to snore. It's such a trip. <laughs> <laughs> but I would snooze and watch some stuff on TV. I didn't get too much reading done because I just was, I felt a little bit of the heartbeats, but not too bad. And, and just, I ate and I slept. Really now how I'm reacting to these frequencies is sleeping. Blowing my nose a lot. Like blowing my nose a lot. <laughs> like literally blowing my nose a lot because that is my pathway to release up here release under my armpits if need be, release down there, all places. And you'll have weird smells come out of your body when your body has produced a lot of hormones or chemistry and it needs to release. It's going to smell like ammonia. It's going to smell, you know, different smells. And it's not like it's bad, like you've done something wrong. It's that you're going through a frequency change. Things in your body are going through processes and some parts of your body are more influential than others. And so it produces a lot of different hormones and it has to release. And that's why people are in pain right now because when the frequencies change and they were gonna be changing aggressively and it's coming up pretty soon, if not right now, people are in pain. They are in such agonizing pain because they have to deal with it. They've been using cures and remedies and surgeries on their bodies for fucking years. They have put their children and themselves through the medical holistic industry as if it was like drinking water. And they have absolutely no problem doing that until they have to pay the piper. What does that mean? The body has to deal with that trauma. The body has to release that trauma. And it can come through dreams, releasing trauma. It can come through pain. It could come through skin conditions. It can come through headaches. It can come through in ways like rashes and sores and so many things. And people are like, oh my God, when their whole body is covered with like psoriatic arthritis type of stuff and they're covered, if they don't want to deal with it again or die from it. They're going to have to release it and feed their body. They can't stuff that genie back in the bottle, though people try and they don't survive stuffing the genie back in the bottle. That's why you're seeing me respond to people when they say, when I'm showing you guys that I have like a hive here, which I don't, but when I show you the things that go on with my skin, that's appropriate, right? I'm not asking for anyone to recommend me a remedy, a surgery, or any kind of protocol, or even using jelly juice. People do. And that's fine. I'm done resisting what other people are doing. I am finally surrendering myself that fine. If you want to take a pill, powder, supplement, detox, using my juice, using holistic remedies, and you want to post it all over my page because that's what you think you should be doing, I'm not going to resist you. I will i won't say too much. I mean, I might let it be there because at this point, I don't give a fuck now. I really don't care what you guys do. Sometimes some of you will ask me questions and be like, why are you saying, you know, uh, it's a, it's a, to wear a mask, we tell you to wear a mask. And I'll just tell you, because it's out of fucking consideration. That's it. I don't care if you think a mask works or doesn't work. It's out of fucking consideration for somebody else. Even if you think it's stupid. If I'm going to walk into an establishment and they have rules and regulations in that establishment, I will follow the fucking establishment. And that's it. There, there is no argument with that. But... As you've seen, there's so many people that want to resist. So I'm done resisting. I'm so done resisting. Now it's fucking strategy because you can't fight the weather. You can't fight the frequencies. You can't even fight your body. I mean, you can, but you won't survive it. And so when your body is going through a lot of energy conversion because of the frequencies in the environment and people are now using so much of their remedies and surgeries and detoxes and even using so much J-juice, they're just shooting themselves in the foot. But again, I can't resist what you can't handle. If you can't handle your pain, you think that my juice or anything else is going to save you, then fine. You can have your beliefs. I'm not resisting it. Too many people. There's not enough. There, what is it? There really isn't a lot of people 
posting all the remedies and shit or challenging me too much on my Facebook. It's when that Dr. Phil segment aired and I'm getting people from before like, oh, wow, Jillian, is she still in existing? <laughs> and so they're looking for me and they find me and they're like, oh, I've been thinking about you. Oh, hey, nice to see you. Oh, hey, nice to see you too. I'm in a different place than you are. You're still in the same place, resisting your body, mind, and spirit. More power to you. Good luck to you. All right? And so when you think about choices, and this is what I learned from my mother, is that you make choices. You make so many choices. You're given so many choices out there. And then you have to even look beyond just the choices that you're given. Now you have to figure out what makes up those choices. What's the lowest common denominator? What's the major factor? What is the common factor in all the choices that you're making and why? And that does require deeper than critical thinking. It requires a little education on your end. And I'm not saying compulsory education or getting a college degree because you're taught a certain way to do things. Now you have to understand the rules and laws of biology and physics and science and math and English and intend to understand it. And that might be a little bit too much for most people. So when you're making choices, some people don't even know that they're making the same choices, even though it's posed as something different, they're still making the same choices. And so in essence, they have essentially basically conscripted themselves into the war against themselves. And you can't take them out of that because that's what they've chosen to do is conscript themselves into a choice that they were trained to be in or do. And so I've learned how to just let it go. And it's hard to let it go. It really is. But it's, it is what it is, I guess. So anyways, um, yeah. All right. And so conscription is when the government is forcing you to do something. Okay. So when you think about the, think about it, the Vietnam war conscripted men who were not college material or could not be reeducated in college. So they forced them into service and die for another man's war. Now there was this JFK actually did that because he was advised by people, by military advisors, right? He, started that and there was like, I guess a selective service and you'll read that. I think I posted that in there, but he started off with the, the lowest on the list would be the married men with children. The next lowest would be married men. And then the first that would be signing that would be conscripted would be the single guys and probably the ones that are not going to college. Cause if you're going to college, you'll then develop a new infrastructure and be brainwashed into that, which is fine. Or you'll go and, and die for your country in whatever manner they want you to die in. So, the anti-war activists, the left, did not want their boys to from they don't want, did not want the boys from the inner cities or conservative patriot homes to go die in the jungle. And so, in essence, the weather underground was trying to save those who did not have a choice in the matter and force them to be maimed in war. And so, when you think about it, the weather underground had very honorable intentions. Okay, so now all of you get the choice: whether to die for your country by resisting weather and fighting weather and fighting change and using the medical holistic energy healing world or strategize your survival and evolve and stop resisting. War has evolved. Okay. And so now as I look back on what the weather underground was intending, they were trying to help people not get dead. <laughs> that sounds bad English, but whatever. They were trying to save the poor kids from the inner cities and even the Patriot homes from going to war and dying in war. They were done with that. They, it was not like, it's, it's not fair. <laughs> it's not fair to those kids and all of that. So, and then they did their own resistance and, and all that stuff. And so we're going to, we're evolving from the weather, the way the weather underground did stuff, but you have to see their intentions because we have a lot of conservatives out there who hate Bernadette Dorn and Bill Ayers and all of that, but they had very, very honorable intentions, very honorable intentions. And so now war has changed. Now all of you get the choice whether to die for your country by resisting weather and fighting weather and fighting change and using the medical holistic energy healing world. You're getting a choice now to either surrender to the evolution and release the demons and take on new information and deal with it, or you can resist Resist yourself out of existence. Like Alex Jones said, he, he and everyone that follows him are the resistance. 
They're going to be the sacrificial lambs. They have conscripted themselves into war voluntarily. Watch the Alex Jones people. Watch the Luke Radowski people. Watch the chemtrail activists. They have conscripted themselves into war of resistance. And it's voluntary. Just like when you go into, like when I went to the military, it was voluntary. And I was able to leave when I wanted to. Okay? Because I was a conscious, conscientious objector against getting the anthrax shot back in 2000 something. All right? Okay, so war is voluntary now. You conscript yourself. When you go to the hospital, you have now declared war on yourself. When you're taking an herb or an extract or a detox or even doing so much J-juice, you have declared war on yourself because you have now resisted the body's ability to release. All right? And so now you have that choice to do that or you can strategize your survival and evolve and stop resisting. War has evolved. You can choose to take yourself out. With the garbage, I guess. You have a choice to stay put in harm's way or strategize your escape route. And when there is no hurricane on your soil right now and no one's telling you evacuate, you now need to strategize how to get the fuck out before another hurricane comes in. Why wait for something that you know is going to happen? Oh, but you don't. Well, the indicators are there. Are you going to wait for something to take you out? I mean, that's just... That's kind of the deer in headlights to those in Florida. It's so sad to watch, but you can't do anything about it. They don't even understand themselves what the fuck, what the fuck is going on. <laughs> All right? You have a choice to make fun of yourself. Or, sorry, <laughs> you have a choice. Well, you do have the choice, too. But you have a choice to make fun of your government and take part in the rallies and other groups' events only to be accidentally destroyed by something. Okay? I mean, there's little skirmishes here and there and police force and rangers will go and, and, and keep law and order and peace and whatever the hell it is. But you go to a route, you go to a big, huge thing like Burning Man. Oh my God. Oh my God. And I'll go into that in a minute. And so you now have a choice. All right. I said President Kennedy's decision to send military troops to Vietnam as advisors was a signal that Selective Service Director Louis B. Hershey needed to visit the Oval Office. From what, from that visit emerged two wishes of JFK with regard to conscription. The first is that the names of the married men with children should occupy the very bottom of the list, and then the call-up list, and just above them should be the, one, the names of the men who were married. And of course, those that are single are not going to college. Yeah, they're being thrown out there. They're being sacrificed, literally sacrificed. And... The New World the, the New World Order was doing that, okay? And the Weather Underground was resisting that. They didn't want that to happen. So both sides, the anti-war and the pro-war, are part of the New World Order, okay? And both sides, the left and the right, work on the same team. They don't know it. They think that they're fighting a different war. They're fighting the same war, and they're fighting alongside each other, but they're still allowing the agenda to happen. And remember, resistance is futile. And so Johnson, Lyndon Baines Johnson, was acting on military advice that, that if greater numbers of troops were sent to Vietnam, victory could be achieved. The only way to achieve that aim was to increase the numbers of Americans who were conscripted. So Johnson got the blame while his military advisors escaped unscathed. And that's the thing with being a president. You will get the blame, you will get the accolades, and the credit relative to what's going on and who is giving you credit and who is blaming you. Okay? I wouldn't want to be president because you really, you're really you merely just a puppet. You really are. I mean, you may have your own ideas you, and you may believe in what it is that you're doing, but you're still a puppet. You're going to be used. And if things go in a specific way that you're not expecting, you still have to be the one, the face of whatever legislation and executive orders that you are being advised to write up and sign off on. Okay? He has a cabinet. And then even the cat, even the military has their own. It's like just, just realize that <laughs> the world is not what you think. We don't have dictators. We have agendas that then give you some kind of perception that you have a choice in the matter. But in reality, you still pay your taxes. You still are given choices what to do. Sometimes when, yeah, when it comes to public health. They have measures that they think could help mitigate potential catastrophic situations, personal catastrophic situations. Even though people don't believe 
these things that they have will mitigate potential catastrophic situations. It doesn't matter if you believe it or not. Okay. No one's making you do anything. Remember, we have delivery services and you don't have to get the V unless you put your kid in public school. But remember, your kids belong to the government. If you're going to put your kid in a public school, in a public venue, yeah, all bets, all bets are off. Okay. If you homeschool your kid, then you're still subject to somebody else developing that curriculum and making sure that your kid is not suffering so much. And that is up to the doctors and all the, the people in the community. All right. But when you send your kid to public school, all bets are off. You have no real control over really anything. And so, wow. and so here's the thing, since Burning Man was kind of leaking out the last couple of days, I've seen it here and there. People are posting. I'm like, okay. I look at it and I think, okay, Burning Man. I mean, I'm Burning Man started in San Francisco back actually in like 1986 and then BlackRock owned a lot of it, I guess, later on, but, um, and Google, I guess too. But, uh, Burning Man is, when you think about it, when you're burning something in effigy, that's like human sacrifice. When you really look at it, like I never looked at Burning Man like that because it was all the people that I used to hang out with in San Francisco. College educated people have their degrees in architecture and they're all part of the hippie stuff, the cute women and men all into free love. I mean, that's San Francisco, gay, straight, whatever. And it was such a spiritual thing to do. It was an enlightening type of thing. And then you had the technology. You've seen the technology, the things that they developed, the artistic expression. And so it became like a rave. I've been to raves in Oakland when, in the 90s at the Henry J. Kaiser Center. And they weren't like, they were legal raves. I'd never been to underground raves. And so... The system on the West Coast to figure out how to develop a legal rave, which would be something that we sanctioned and sold tickets to. And you have a big area like Black Rock, Pershing, Nevada, I guess that's what you call it. And it is a legal rave and you can do whatever the hell you want. It's basically anarchy. It's sexual anarchy, um, psychedelic anarchy, drug anarchy, exec yeah, um, artistic anarchy it's like craziness craziness and so that was i guess an experimental thing of how people how people i don't even know exactly what the experiment is but it's an experiment of just people getting together and how they react to each other and what they would do when they have nobody telling them they should do this or that or not do this they go crazy it they do literally go crazy i mean I don't know how many people have overdosed in these places. Do they talk about it? I don't know. But 73,000 people, people are going to die. Though they said one person died out there. I don't know who it was. But eventually you'll be held accountable for your actions when you converge somewhere. Okay? I hope you survive your lifestyle. During these times, especially now, why am I saying this? Because now that we are going in, now we're in climate change. There is hurricanes on, on the right coast, which is like the east. <laughs> And you had a hurricane or a tropical storm on the left coast, which is west. And we're going into the autumn equinox and we're heading in. We have rumors of lockdowns and COVID-19 creeping up again. And I felt the frequencies the last couple of weeks. I felt stuff and I've been releasing stuff. So we've had maybe a year or two respite of finally coming to relative equilibrium where we're forgetting what it was like back in 2020 and even early 2021, so 2022, and now we're in 2023, ending 2023, we've been uh, so conditioned to be like, okay, COVID's gone, everyone's okay, but frequencies are going up. Remember, we're headed into, we are in a scale down. Remember Georgia Guidestones. And so when you hear rumors of lockdowns and COVID and even potentially rumors of like different viruses coming up, now getting together, now getting together could like be used as a scapegoat to blame when they have to develop another pandemic. Who's they? The system, right? Because remember, pandemics are not, they aren't, they're not spontaneous. It's, it's, the narration is developed 
there's got to be a large group of people that everybody knows what they're doing and even could potentially be like, this is kind of gross. Um, that's got to be public knowledge and even rumors. And so when you have a rumor that says, yes, there is a virus and then no, there is not, it doesn't even matter that was put out there and now that could be used as like, well, we didn't want to say it was because we had no real actual confirmation. But upon further studying and more investigation, let's just say in a couple months, we have found that, yes, there is a strain of this that did happen to this person, this person, because people were leaking out that they were throwing up blood. And I know how frequencies work. Frequencies develop viruses. They bring up the most influential colony forming unit in people. And when you have the most influential colony forming unit in your body, that might resemble some kind of disease you've heard about in the movies, like outbreak, then of course it's communicable and then it spreads like wildfire. And so that then lays the groundwork for the next phase, which is then raising frequencies. And then you had someone to blame the burning man people. And then when you converge, you've then given somebody a reason, a story to develop around that situation, you develop a patsy. See, they tried to make me a patsy back in the J world with around the salt and the water, but I fought that, that characterization, that mischaracterization with science. And I threw it right back in their lap. You've starved your patients out. And then when they do a Hail Mary, then you blame the latest thing. Sorry, no, your hospice and anything like that does not just happen overnight. People don't die from salt over fucking night or even from a couple weeks or months, okay? There's already been the great, the, the, the groundwork laid and then that person could not be treated anymore in the medical or holistic system and their Hail Mary was then the last thing blamed. They tried to use me as a patsy, I wouldn't let them do it. But now you have all 73,000 Young adults and older adults who are all hippie and into free sex and free love don't even know what the hell's going on. They will be used as a patsy for the next pandemic. And if it doesn't happen, I hope not. But if it does happen, I told you so. But somebody's got to take the fall for the next pandemic because things don't just happen spontaneously. And some things have to have a catalyst, action, reaction. It's all laws of motion. For every action is equal or opposite reaction. Well... Burning Man was an action, then there'll be a reaction and you can develop the story around the reaction and even develop so many things. The narratives can be left wide open based on how you want to, what your intention and what your outcome wants to be. So during these times, this is why I don't go anywhere. If they say there's an outbreak because of frequencies, but the average person does not know this, okay? So they say, oh, there's an outbreak somewhere. Well, I know it's from frequencies. The average person does not know this. So they'll think, oh God, somebody from Africa or somebody from Asia or somebody from wherever came through and just spread a virus. Well, okay, that might happen in a very localized area. But when it comes to a mass, mass epidemic, pandemic, then frequencies make the sicknesses stronger and also bring up people's sicknesses. So then you get a mishmash of microbial cesspool that then could potentially cause you to be positive on a titer test. And so during these times, that's why I don't go anywhere. If they say there's an outbreak because frequencies, but the average person does not know this, then they quarantine you in whatever area you're in. Kiss your ass goodbye, especially if you are fighting disease. Because yeah, when you're getting so many frequencies thrown at you and you have disease, you'll be throwing up blood, you'll be throwing up everything. Your blood vessels might even pop because you have weak blood vessels. And when you have the body trying to push out antigen because that's what energy does it activates your immune system and you have weak blood vessels yeah you might have bursting blood vessels but since i've been conditioned for the frequencies and i'm staying home and releasing demons and eating food i am reinforcing my blood vessels reinforcing my alimentary canal so i can blow my nose so i can shit and my body has a way to release without having to pop blood vessels in order to do that But those who have weak blood vessels, those who are weak and fighting disease, they don't have that reinforcement. That's why I don't travel right now. Because planes could go down because shit happens up there in the air. There could be an outbreak in the area you were vacationed in, so you're then stuck in quarantine. Remember 2020? Okay. If they say you're exposed to something, then you have to list out everyone you hung out with. So then contact tracing. 
Remember that? We're bringing some shit back to life that was put to sleep <laughs> for a couple of years. Then you have to list out everyone you hung out with. And then you could get your friends under exposure and quarantined. Because then you have to out your friends. But then remember, they're following phones. If you've been in an area where there's an outbreak, they're going to follow your phone. They're going to go right to your fucking door and be like, okay, you were, you were here. Who were you around? Where were you around? Now you all have to stay home and stay safe and all that shit. Quarantines are coming in the future. You heard the rumors. They had the last few years. They rolled it out. They got all the all the people. They, remember, they put all those those job listings and saying, hey, we need a person that does a contact tracing. Well, that hasn't gone to the wayside. That's going to happen at some point. You're going to have people come into your house if you've been in areas that have been deemed as an outbreak, the ground zero or wherever. And so then you can get your friends under exposure and in quarantine. Quarantines are coming in the future. You heard the rumors. Lockdowns. I'm not even ruling out the masks. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> You could thank all the self-entitled hippie crunchy people out on the West Coast thinking they're so enlightened. <laughs> now I'm being a little snarky, all right. And they couldn't and you couldn't even fathom this could happen. Stuck in the mud and quarantined and used as a fucking tool, and you will be the reason why we will be in quarantine this fall. <laughs> now now I'm playing the blame game. Cause I, because you know that's gonna happen. Somebody's gonna get blamed for this pandemic. Somebody will. Because remember, all that water on lake beds that are so dry, they've been dry for years. I used to go when I was in the military, we do um Operation readiness exercises and operation readiness inspections, and they would be out out there in the desert, and I forget what it was called, but it'd be out there in the Nevada desert, and we were shooting off m sixties m sixteens out there, and how you know you figure how many how much toxic exposure could be out there there's air forces air force bases that have toxic exposure stuff in areas that they're doing you know mobilizations or they're doing maneuvers okay and so when, when so it's all dry okay no big deal but when it's wet then you add water to the mix now you're activating these toxins who knows what the hell is in there okay so so that's i mean there's so many stories that could be developed that would not be far from the truth because again the military has done so many maneuvers in the desert of nevada and how many how many military trucks and how many encampments that spring up from these maneuvers? And then where do they put the waste and what were they doing? You don't fucking know anything. Okay? So that's what I'm saying. <laughs> the world's not what you think. <laughs> and so the system you're the Patsy, and they will they will they will be it if, if that's the case. And I hope it isn't, but remember, you never know. You just have to as you have to entertain all scenarios. Okay, remember high frequencies open up blood vessels, people's bodies release mucus and sometimes, sometimes blood vessels burst because some people have weak blood vessels and hemorrhage and hemorrhagic fever is not unheard of. So I'm thinking about outbreak and in that place like over there in Africa. Can you imagine how many frequencies may have been concentrated in one area causing then an outbreak of sorts, little like outbreak. What is outbreak when your body is trying to release demons and you have very weak blood vessels? It wasn't everybody that passed away in that camp or was afflicted. It was the people who had certain conditions and, you know, DNA runs everywhere. There's a lot of family and they all probably are, have the same kind of DNA and the same weak blood vessels. And so exposed to a frequency, they all react the same and have relatively the same outcome. They died. Okay. And you saw big boils and things. I mean, what are boils when your body is is trying is is reacting so much and there's so much energy and that like when you're yeah <laughs> it's pretty gruesome all right so that's why you need to stay home right now and stay safe because this we're in a conditioning process and resistance is not going to fucking help you <sighs> so high concentration of microwaves and frequencies can do that which is why then people are communicable because they're releasing their demons through blood and mucus which is why I get hives and feel my immune system open up to release the excessive growth. Okay. And then I repair the damage with food and sleep and rest. And I do not do drugs or alcohol and I do not smoke cigarettes. I quit everything addictive and I do not use allopathic or holistic to treat disease. I eat and release my demons and I rest. This is why I stay home and stay safe and release demons and eat food. And I don't fuck with too many people and I have no desire to fit in. So now suspect all public events will be subject to aggressive frequencies and you could be ground zero if they want you to be. I would assume every popular public event could be used as a tool 
frequency radiation. So when they when people are going to these concerts, like the the Eras concert, Tra the Travis Scott concerts, all these different concerts and these frequencies, not just from the music, but then whatever else that could be going on that you don't even know about, people are people were passing away or getting heart attacks and strokes. I mean, how did you hear about that at all when I back in the eighties when I went to the Gloria Estefan concert? Or any of the concerts, did you hear about anything, people dying from heart attacks out there in the audience? Well, for some reason, that's happening now. You can blame the Vs, but okay, people were getting feed back then. Oh, but now it's a stronger V. What's a V? V A C C I N E S. -S. And so I said Ebola 2023, Burning Man 2023, microwave frequencies, all this stuff. Okay, remember Forbes gives you the answer and then takes it away. It's their way of warning you. So someone posted a picture of Forbes saying yes, there was, and then someone posted a picture saying Forbes, no, there wasn't. So you don't know what's true or not, right? During these times, that's why I don't go anywhere. If they say there's an outbreak because of frequencies and they quarantine you in whatever area, kiss your ass goodbye. So now you see biological wars and the herbs and extracts and supplements, pills, powders, detox, and starvation, and lots and lots of hot men and women. The system wants you to serve your country by using oncology, surgery, diets, herbs, drugs, natural, synthetic, antibiotics, or suffer to live and then evolve. And so you have a choice. You could serve your country by taking all the remedies and surgeries and detoxes and surgeries and detoxes and everything else, or you could suffer to live and evolve and eat food and stay home and stay safe and expand your brain, okay? That war, the war has changed and no more conscription. Now it's through your family and friends. Your family and friends are going to recommend you a, a holistic remedy, a detox, a pill, a powder, surgery, an oncology, and major, major distraction. Good luck fighting off people you love and respect the most. And we thank you for your service. You are eliminating the competition and you have been given the choice. People choose to maim themselves and their family and friends. And so now you'll see how energy can, be a make, it, can make it be like Judgment Day. In a slow frequency environment and hands off from most of the authority, no one is setting you up to fail purpose. No one is setting you up to fail purposely. Okay? So in a slow frequency environment and hands off from most of the authority, no one is setting you up to fail purposely. You could have got, you could get away with a lot. You could get away with abusing your body and abusing your position in the world. You can get away with partying so much. There will be a time when the frequencies will be so aggressive, your body will have a hard time handling your lifestyle and the aggressive environment, plus also your predisposed issues. We are in that time right now. And so remember they warned you about the Marburg virus is going to happen sometime in the future. Potentially even children could be affected. Well, Burning Man was the kickoff. If that, in fact, is what they're going to use, they may not. Who knows? May the odds be in your favor. And so when someone tries to say, well, they said it wasn't, there was no E and then Bola, and there was no other virus, that, that that was all, you know, debunked or some shit. It was it was said it it wasn't so. Well, as soon as someone speaks it, right, it goes viral. And it will be a self-fulfilling prophecy. So when someone leaked out that there are, their tent mate was throwing up blood and it's all coagulated and everything else. Well, you know, things, things travel wildfire. And then no crisis goes unwasted. There's no such thing as a wasted crisis, right? Somebody will, will capitalize on that. Somebody will. People have. Why not the government, right? <laughs> Confirming or denying any rumor just brings it more into existence. Here we go. Stay home. Stay safe. Wear a mask if you're asked. Get out of harm's way. There's nothing to resist. Release the demons. And that's what sparked that young lady on my page. And I have no issue with her. She's been fine. People are in heavy, heavy resistance, heavy denial of what's really going on. And they think that non-compliance, don't comply, is going to save them. Well, what you're doing is you're acting imperialistic. But people don't think of themselves that way. They're trying to save people. Yeah, imperial, imperialists think they're saving people from themselves. So now the war has changed. You are presented with so many different people and their lifestyles and belief systems. It's not your place to go on their page and try to change them or even really challenge them, though we do feel compelled because that was bred into us is to go and convert to do some kind of ideological colonialism, imperialism. And now it's time to breed that out of the population, breed that out of people. Because change is going to happen, but no one is forcing you to change. They're changing the environment. They're not changing you. They're giving you all the information. They're saying, hey, watch out for this, watch out for that. 
we recommend this, we recommend that, doesn't mean you have to take their recommendations, but you now have the choice to process the information and it's not up to us to do, go and try to convert people. And so there's nothing to resist. So frequencies plus toxic mud from old lake beds. Well, <laughs> all right. So then I said, well, so they go home, virus release, rumors, high frequency starts, and who is to blame? Burning Man people. Hmm. They have all the names and addresses of all the Burning Man concert goers. So when the time to quarantine, they will visit all the houses, contact tracing, and ask for whoever has been in contact. Everyone gets tested. People are experiencing diagnosable conditions. And that's just worst case scenario and potentially even what could happen. Patsy developed. There, was all, there will always be a Patsy. And since Nevada is a huge desert, oh wow, I have all these breaking news that possible major hurricane incoming. <laughs> oh shit. And since Nevada is a huge desert that was used for so many military mobilizations and practices, who knows what's in the desert as far as toxic type of conditions when mixed with water. So many scenarios can be developed from that event. I hope I'm not right. And so then you think about rituals and about the Rosicrucians, all about rituals. Rituals on the both coasts, Hurricane Idalia to the southeast, Burning Man to the northwest. Welcome to the autumn equinox. All right, so now we're going into cultural imperialism, okay, which is basically when people resist each other and try to convert each other and they overstep boundaries, okay? So parents do colonize their children. That right there, colonialism imperialism forced converting people starts out in the parents with their own child so the parents have gotten trained on how to how to how to colonize something how to force convert something parents have that training and then they go and do that to their friends and family and to strangers cultural imperialism if you cannot handle somebody else's thought process you might be an imperialist if no one is putting their hands on you, you are forcing or forcing you to do anything and you're resisting verbally and even physically, you might be an imperialist. The thing about not sticking with something too long, especially if it's somebody else's ideas, you have you have to adopt in order to do your job. You don't get brainwashed into their belief system. OK, so I didn't stick with compulsory education. I when you think about it, I only had an eighth grade education when I in 1993. Four. I got a GD, and I did the ASVAB, went to the military, and then I went to college um, getting loans and whatever. And so I took on the higher levels of education, like going to city college and even going to private colleges in my area, like JFK University at the time. It was in Orinda, California, and it was for psychology because my roommate who has her, who, who had her, was in the military with me. And she had her high school diploma and everything. She was in that college. And so I took out a loan. I paid it off. It's like $3,000 per semester. Took a few classes in psychology. Okay, great. Then I went to Diablo Valley College and then City College of, of San Francisco. And then Chapman University, which was the adult side of it over there in Folsom, California. And I took many classes. Many, many classes. And took remedial math and algebra. And I'm like, what am I taking this for? What the fuck am I doing? I don't even know what the hell I was doing. And so, and then when I went to Chapman, I learned organizational development and connected with the people in the tech world, learned stuff around business process engineering because all organizational development and I'm, and I'm going to school with people who are in Microsoft, people who are in Intel. And then they're telling me about stuff they do for their job and how they were incorporating their job and their team building into class projects and then you learn about what people are doing in their jobs in the tech world and so you know and so i didn't stick with things too much because i was just picking up information picking up information who knows what the fuck i was gonna do with it but it's picking up information to maybe help me in my next job and yeah some of the business process engineering where you're developing process flow diagrams and you're developing pro process flow like organizational business processes so you can figure out what when you make a phone call to then make an appointment to then selling an insurance policy and then what happens after that the processing of that and then how long it takes to do this and that and then all the follow-up and the maintenance and there is a process to all of that and you map it out and so you force yourself to become detailed for every action there's an equal or opposite reaction 
if you do this, then this will happen. If you do this, so it's a training of the mind on how you look at cause and effect, intention, outcome. And then I also had the landmark education in my twenties, in my twenties, teaching about ontology, about the curriculum for living how not to get caught up in what people say and what they make something mean. Okay. So I had so many, <laughs> the San Francisco the West coast training in, in just how you look at the world and it's not so narrow and so one-sided. There are so many things you must consider and understanding arguments, different arguments, understanding different cultures, understanding different sexual orientations, understanding even different business ways of doing things. Okay. And so if I were to stay stuck in just one area, I would have not gotten the, I would not have received the massive amount of, of diverse learning on how to look at things in different ways. You can look at it from a from a theoretical or a creative way, the big picture, and then also go down to the nitty gritty. Know how to, to go down to action, reaction, action, reaction, action, reaction, not skip over the action, reaction and say, okay, here's the outcome. Well, how'd you get to that outcome? Well, this was the process. That's why I'm telling you where I'm getting my information from. That's why I'm telling you why it is certain things come up for me. Like this culture imp imperialism came up just from someone commenting and I found that Facebook mention through my email and someone I don't even know that was commenting on my old page and was imposing her beliefs. And then that's just this morning. That's what sparked that little comment that what she said sparked the cultural imperialism post. Okay. So it just can take one thing, one little thing to trigger a chain reaction of events. And you hope that you have enough training in your body, mind, and spirit and enough clarity of thought to know how to organize your thoughts to then develop a thesis even for that moment. Okay? That's the power of releasing your demons so you don't have all these little voices in your body that are microbial telling you to do this, do that, don't do this, and telling you to reject or focus so much and become so obsessed with a person, place, or thing or an idea Okay, you got to release your demons. Okay, so cultural imperialism. The thing about not stick with something too long, especially if it's somebody else's ideas you have adopted in order to do your job, you you don't get brainwashed or into their belief system. Now I understand why I'm different. Why it is I'm different than most people? I don't stick around in compulsory school for too long to get brainwashed. I chose when to go to college and what I was going to study, and why even if I didn't. And why, even if I didn't know why, I stayed long enough in the military to get my experience and get valuable tools and technology to learn my job in the civilian world. So I had more to choose from. I wasn't lucky enough to be groomed into position from my parents like most people who are. I groomed myself through trial and error and I suffered, of course, because you had to learn the ways of the world. And it's not a friendly place, especially if you haven't been brainwashed into one specific area. So going to the temp agencies and learning all the different modules, because I didn't learn everything in the military. I mean, you learn how to how to make a file and copy and paste and 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 maybe modify documents. But I really had to learn the Excel and Word and PowerPoint and access and then even learn how to use the the um, the, di the things that you can develop diagrams or process flow diagrams and other stuff. And I forget what that what that system is called, but that's just making those, the different shapes into if then type of situations. But anyways, and so I did not plant too many roots in areas that had somebody else's ideas and thoughts and lifestyle. I had to help, I had to be the captain of my own ship. And even though I'm married, I'm still the captain of my own ship. And I had, and I, and I co-captain with my husband. And that's the key to being evolutionary. What brought this on? Because some of the trolls out there that watch the Dr. Phil show have commented on my old profile and I'm fine with that. Whatever. Have at it. That's my old world. That's my dead body. You can have fun with my dead body. This profile is the alive profile. It's my live body, but you have the dead body over there. That's why I left the profile. It's not difficult for me to start over again. And she was imposing her belief system that came from a very rigid background of the military. She believed everyone should die someday. It's just a matter of how cured and zombified you need to be and still carry out your duties without harming other people unless you're told to. That's the military way. When they tell you to go and shoot at someone, you go and shoot at someone if you're in war in a war situation. And then pass away when you're told to. 
That's called hospice. And so she has many veterans in her family, many, many veterans in her family, and we thank her and them for their service. But I don't subscribe to her, to her or her lifestyle or belief system, but she thinks she has a right to impose her lifestyle and belief system onto my page. And many resistors do that. They think they have the right to impose their beliefs because they just can't fathom anyone having any other idea other than theirs. And if, not, if it's not about the mask, it'll be about the vaccines. If it's not about the vaccines, it'll be about the lockdowns. If they wanted you all to pass away, you would not be here. They, they wouldn't waste your time making you jump through hoops. You're in a conditioning process. The ones who understand what's going on, they will figure out how to survive all this without resisting. Those who feel compelled to counter your information on your own page, and I've done it, that's the entitlement of people who think they have power over other people. Now, I won't even do it politely. I learned my lesson. Holy shit. Remember how I justified going onto the other person's page? She's a Christian. I'm like, well, I'm not a Christian, but I'm, just, you know, I, I, I did it. Okay. I'm guilty of it. I won't, I won't do that again ever again. I won't. I won't be an imperialist. Fuck no. You choose your own adventure. That's imperialism. That's the impediment of imperialism. That's what the weather underground was trying to fight against. Microbial colonialism. Ideological colonialism. When, you, when people cannot handle your different thought process, they feel they must try to take over and convert someone or become an imperialist. Now I understand why the weather underground did what they did, but, I would, but it would backfire eventually. No matter what, when you declare war on someone through violence, verbally or physically, you become the same thing, the same thing that you think somebody else is. When you politely resist somebody else, you become the aggressor. It's very easy to do, even I fall into it and justify it. Well, I was polite. That doesn't make a fucking difference. You had no business going on her page. And I didn't. I had no business going on her page. But again, when you're emotional and you see things that are happening and people need to be warned, well, it's not your fucking place. If they don't, they don't fucking get it. If they have to sit in their place in Florida and wait for a fucking hurricane to drown them, that is what it is. That is what it is. If they have their absolution, they have Christ or Yah or anyone else, they, that, that's their strategy to survive it and be okay with what's going on, be okay with not changing. I have to come to terms with that. It's fucking difficult. It's so fucking difficult, but I have to come to terms with that. Now you understand war. How do you change without forcing people to change? You change their environment and you force them to adapt. If they can't, see you later. And that's not imperialism. That's called evolution adaptation when you change someone's environment then they have to be forced to change but you can't forcibly change someone into believing anything that's why people are anti-war oh wait here we go okay that's okay that's not imperialism that's evolution adaptation military types will have very difficult time with my information and i don't blame them they went through massive amounts of programming aggressive programming imperialism was bred into their lifestyle and belief system and their children were bred to be imperialistic or to allow somebody to colonize them on such a level where they get destroyed by the colonization okay that's what people are anti-war but remember even anti-war people declare war they become the very thing they are resisting that's why resistance is futile now it's strategy january 6th was the example of non-resistance of the government and they let you guys screw yourself and you did and those who resist their, own, resist their own bodies and natural processes of release using remedies, even my juice against your body's ability to release, resistance is futile. You won't survive resisting even yourself. Using holistic remedies is resistance against your body, mind, and spirit. And you won't survive even your own lifestyle. <laughs> As I said before, I am the existence. I'm not the resistance. I am the existence. Resistance is futile. All right? That's was a major, major awareness that I just discovered today about imperialism. And buying that book, and I, 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 I'm not really too far into it because I'm thinking about stuff. I'm not trying to just, you know, slam read through it and skim it. No, they've got to put some thought into it because that's exactly what, that's why the war has changed. It's not, we're not in people's worlds anymore. Now the weather is changing your environment. Now the frequencies are going up. And either you're going to defend yourself and feed yourself and release the demons and condition yourself to accept the changes and not resist and find a way to survive or you'll resist yourself to death or stay put and do nothing and be washed away by rising floodwaters. Or you'll be under the influence. 
or you'll be a rabble rouser. And the system knows exactly what it is you intend to do. They know exactly your lifestyle, your belief systems, how you're going to react to anything. Resistance has been in wars for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. You have nothing on what they have compiled. There's so much information about people in the Vatican, all over the world, in high levels of government. You don't know who you're up against. You're up against some very advanced, advanced people. So now you must strategize. And the J world is a strategy. And so I don't promote resistance. I promote strategy. I promote releasing the demons. I promote getting out of harm's way. If you even recognize you're in harm's way. And if you can't even recognize harm's way, I can't fucking help you. The government can't fucking help you. So they let you do what you do. They won't resist you taking your drugs and your surgeries and your pills and your powders and your turmeric and your honey and your apple cider vinegar. They won't get in the way of that. Because remember, we're in a scale down. They're not going to resist you destroying yourself. That's the intention. But they don't want to be the one doing it. And you blaming them. They want you to do it to yourself. You doing it to your children. You in, in an FDA approved type of protocol. And so if the protocols are not so aggressive like pharmaceuticals, then they'll raise the frequencies. And you'll apply a lot more fucking natural remedies to your body, mind, and spirit until you don't exist anymore. That's how shit works. That's what's going on. If you don't get it by now, I don't even care at this point. Because I'm not resisting you trying to destroy yourself. You're taking away, you're eliminating the competition. And we thank you for your service. But you've been given all the information. You've been given so much stuff. But I am anti-imperialist. I am not going to try to take over and tell you you should live if you think you should die someday. And I don't want anyone really coming on my page and being an imperialist, but people do. And they try to do it politely, like I justified it. So again, I'm getting karma, and I'm, and I'm fine with it. I was patient with her last night. She's a nice lady. Everyone's nice. But you see the evidence of resistance. Imperialism was bred into the population. Now it's time to breed it out. You represent your world, and we'll all get to watch what happens. All right, bye.